गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू गना शॉट गना शॉट में आप सबको स्वागत है दोबारा राइट कमडोर वासन जो है वो हमारे साथ चंद ही मिनट तो मैं जुड़ जाएंगे तब तक मैं आप लोगों को बताना चाहता हूं कि जो चाइना चैलेंज है वो अच्छी तरीके से चल रहा है राइट मुझे अच्छा रिस्पॉन्स भी मिल रहा है और आप लोगों से बहुत ही अच्छा सवाल और जवाब हमें सवाल मिल रहे हैं I think the kind of questions I'm getting are superb. I I must compliment every one of you who are uh, this thing, uh, putting these questions up. The second thing which I want to put across to all of you is that I have uh, you know some people have been asking me when are you starting a particular program X Y Z. I must tell you that in all cases I'll start this program. at 8 o'clock in the evening at time someone might say please join in at uh, 7:30 so i'll say okay we'll we'll do it at 7:30 but generally we'll start at 8 o'clock and i'll do this program four to six days in a week and that will be there in the upcoming uh, thing in the gana uh, short live mein dekhiye aapko milega pura program kya kya hai right okay मेरे साथ कमोडोर वासन जुड़ चुके हैं आज हम बात करेंगे पीएलए नेवी इन द इंडियन ओशन रीजन इनका एम्बिशन और लिमिटेशन क्या है और हमारे साथ इसके इसको डिस्कस करने के लिए हैं कमोडोर वासन सर गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू गना शॉट इट्स एन ऑन ऑफ मी दैट यू आर हियर थैंक यू जनरल शंका गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल दिजनर्स एंड पार्टिसिपेंट always a great pleasure and honor to be with you you've sure. been doing a great job and you know the gunner shot you know i've been a regular follower of all that you write read and present and you know therefore i think the rural awareness as far as issues of uh, topical concern are concerned you know that's something that uh, is made a big mark uh, amongst the intellectuals and observers so i must compliment you on your efforts which is a great thing that's happened and therefore i am very happy to be part of this So, uh, thanks a lot um uh, thanks a lot for your compliments par main aapko hamare sath jo jude hain un sab ko so at the outset you can speak in english you can speak in hindi you can speak in spanish any language goes even tamil goes right so <laughs> right but uh, i'll try and speak in hindi because there we have a fair lot of people who are hindi speaking right आज मैं बताना चाहता हूं मैं क्यों कमोडोर वासन को आज बुलाया सबसे पहले तो वो सीनियर नेवल ऑफिसर है उन्होंने जो नेवी में क्या किया वो तो इसीलिए तो कमोडोर बने पर नेवी को छोड़ने के बाद उन्होंने क्या किया वो इम्पोर्टेंट है मेरे लिए वो आजकल वो डायरेक्टर है चेन्नई सेंटर फॉर चाइना स्टडीज राइट और साउथ में ये एक मेजर थिंक टैंक है जो चाइना के बारे में सोच विचार करता है या ग्रेजुएट प्रोग्राम्स चलते हैं पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट प्रोग्राम्स चलते हैं इंटर्नशिप चलते हैं चाइना के बारे में और चाइना सेंटर फॉर सॉरी चेन्नई सेंटर फॉर चाइना स्टडीज का मेल मिला बहुत बाकी थिंक टैंक्स इंडिया में है और इंटरनेशनल थिंक टैंक्स के साथ मेल मिलाप है और उन्होंने पिछले पांच आठ 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 नौ साल एम आई राइट सर एट ईयर यू बीन इन दर एज डायरेक्टर जनरल डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ द Chennai Center for China Studies उन्होंने बहुत इधर सॉलिड इंप्रूवमेंट किया है अबाउट अवेयरनेस ऑफ चाइना इन इंडिया एंड खास करके साउथ इंडिया में राइट सिर्फ चाइना ही नहीं बाकी कॉन्टेम्प्रेरी सब्जेक्ट जैसे कोई भी कोई भी चीज जब इंडियन ओशन रीजन में होता है या श्रीलंका में कोई प्रॉब्लम है या इस इलाके में हमारा तटवर्तीय इलाके में जो भी इशू है वो भी इस सेंटर हैंडल करती है इनके द्वारा तो इसीलिए इसीलिए मैंने आज इनको बुलाया कि इंडियन ओशन रीजन के बारे में बात करें एक तो नेवी के हैं और दूसरा चेन्नई सेंटर ऑफ चाइना स्टडीज के डायरेक्टर जनरल हैं तो इससे अच्छा हमें आ, मौका नहीं मिलेगा चाइना के बारे में बात करने के लिए तो हम सीधा इंडियन ओशन में चलते हैं सर द फ्लोर इज ऑल योर्स यू कैन स्टार्ट विद स्मॉल इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द इंडियन ओशन एंड देन वी विल सी वेयर वी गो Uh, thank you very much general shankar for the nice uh, 
words. I know it could not have happened without the support of the members. Uh, you are also a distinguished member of our Chennai Center for China Studies. And that's added a phenomenal amount of value to what we do. And uh, so the active participation of members, the young minds of Chennai Center for China Studies, and the, and the support that we get from uh, various uh, uh, intellectuals is what's kept us going for the last 15 years. Uh, just last month on 4th of April, we celebrated 15 years of Chennai Center for China Studies, of which I've been, of course, leading the organization for the last nine years. It's been a proud moment for me to have been part of this and for celebrating the 15th anniversary where we did a great program which was attended by your representatives of the MEA. Now, let me not... Oh, well, I, you uh, gave me an opportunity to speak also on that. Thank yes. You. You know, I, I always make it a point to invite General Shankar because uh, he's so well informed and he's current. And I keep on joking with him to say that, you know, unless he writes two articles a day, he'll not be able to eat his breakfast and digest it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you, much. Yes, yeah. Sir. So therefore, yeah. let me come back straight away without wasting too much of time. I also would like to give some time for discussions yes, and uh, for question and answers. The question is very relevant. Why is PLA Navy in the IOR? And what are its ambitions? And of course, what are the limitations? So from all this, you know, in fact, I must thank again General Shankar for uh, giving me the support with the maps, which are so relevant. So I can put up the first one about the Indian Ocean region. And you know, this tells you how central and pivotal India is in the scheme of things as far as maritime issues are concerned. You know, here is where you know what I heard it so many times that we are jetting into the Indian Ocean region, bifurcating it to the Bay of Bengal on one side, on the eastern side, and on the western side, the Arabian Sea, which has had historical, cultural, trade significance for countries in the region. You know, while we are looking east, we tend to forget west. You know, the kind of relations that we had with uh, uh, the Arabs, uh, with the French, uh, with the Italians, uh, the, you know, the Europeans. So there has been phenomenal amount of connection that's there. It's not of today's origin. And trade commerce has been there, which was the strength of India. We traded with both eastern economies as well as western economies. And, you know, it was a maritime route, obviously. This was in addition to the land routes, you know, the silk route, the land silk route that we talk about, which enabled us to transport Buddhism to, you know, Southeast Asia, to China, to other East Asian countries. So all this has happened through, you know, centuries of our existence. And India, today, you know, we are trying to reinvent the maritime significance of this country. Please remember that... You know, it is through the sea routes that we are subjugated for centuries. You know, not so much through the land routes. Yes, the Mughals did come there. But it is more through the maritime trade, you know, where we were subjugated to colonial rules from which we got liberated. <clears throat> so we are trying to reinvent the significance of the ocean to us. And which is where this is the centrality that you see in this map, which, which may, has, you know, we have no doubt whatsoever that it is the maritime domain and the happenings out there that will be of great importance to India and its neighborhood. Can we look at the other one about the Indo-Pacific? Right. Now, see, this is the new definition that we are looking at. What was previously referred to as Asia-Pacific. Again, even Asia-Pacific brought in the centrality of India. And whether you call it Indo-Pacific, you call it Indo Asia Pacific. You know, only the geographic boundaries have changed, but not the centrality of either India. Only thing is I can add is that even ASEAN has become central to the India Pacific. And our own activist policy synchronizes this vision of Indo Pacific uh, area. <clears throat> That's of great uh, importance to us. Now, let me come back to China. After all, today we are discussing China. Why is China interested in the Indian Ocean region? Why does it want to bring in its PLA units into the Indian Ocean region? How will it achieve it? What are the limitations? So this is where I'll again request General Shankar to go to the oil routes, the energy routes. Yes, you know this tells you the modern day dependence on the energy routes. And they are transported through the sea lines of communication. 
on the sea lines of communication their security their integrity is something of a great concern to the navies of the world the navies and the coast guards are actively engaged on a 24/7 basis to ensure that there are no acts such as acts of piracy acts of unconventional threats acts of marine pollution all this come in the way of you know free and open uh, areas whether you call it foip which is a free open indo pacific or the free and open indian ocean region for that example so it's important for us to ensure that the prosperity and development of all the countries which are connected by the oceans whether it's pacific ocean or the indian ocean or the atlantic ocean or the mediterranean sea or greatly dependent on the seas you would have heard this very often as to how 90% of by volume or something like 75% by uh, value you know goes through the seas because the maritime transportation continues to be the cheapest form of transportation have no doubts about it per kilometer cost of carrying goods on a big ship would would be minimal in comparison with your carriage either through air or road or rail so this is the factor that has enabled connectivity has enabled countries to come together through the sea routes for spread of civilization culture and of course for achieving their geostrategic ambitions the greatest example is of america which by and large was driven by the 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 prescriptions of admiral tar mahan who said it is a sea that is important and will hold the destiny of the countries in our own case it was sardar panika you know who has made no bones about the importance of indian ocean region you know we for a long time we did not look at our own uh, intellectuals you know whether it is parikkar or whether it is in the recent times uh, admiral raja mohan and others so <clears throat> what is important here is to understand that china as a developing country as an aspirational power as someone who wants to displace america cannot but look at the oceans whether it is the the pacific ocean or the indian ocean for its own sustenance of its ambitions and goals so is it today that china is here please remember that more than 600 years ago admiral zheng he you know he was a unique admiral but he is the one who brought the entire chinese fleet into the indian ocean region took them all the way to africa and there has been recorded history of admiral zheng he who has transited these oceans 600 years ago uh, about 10 or 15 years ago china celebrated this voyage you know of uh, such great importance however after the ming dynasty when he went back by and large the navy was disbanded so they had, they realized the folly of disbanding this navy which gave them that kind of a reach you know please remember again this would have been quoted often that the combined gdp of india and china surpassed the combined gdp of all other nations put together you know it was more than 50 51% how did this happen it happened because of their their own uh, proficiency in sailing proficiency in connectivity the ancient civilizations who ensured that optimal harnessing of the sea was what sustained their economic and prosperity interests so however when you move forward move the clock forward to the 20th century you realize that china remained a continental power uh, when you look at their first and second line of defense it told you that they were more interested in protecting their coast it's in the south china sea it's only now that you realize that they are now looking at the third line of defense which goes beyond japan so obviously there is an aspiration of the blue navy kind no obviously the the economic strength that it has our general shankar has written an enormous amount of uh, data is it's extracted this even in the last gunner shot you know he made it a point to present these economic factors of china so that tells you that over the years i uh, you know it has consolidated its position as a number one economic power it will surpass usa 
today is looking at 18.34 uh, us dollar uh, us trillion dollar economy and we are at about 33.5 so this is some differential that is there and cannot be totally offset just by your centrality in the indian ocean region i'll come to this a little later so when you look at the aspiration of china it's clear that they realize the limitation of not having a blue water navy so they invested in what we today call as comprehensive maritime power you know it's not just the comprehensive national power but the comprehensive national power which is you know augmented by the comprehensive national maritime power many mistake the naval power to be a comprehensive maritime power it is not so the comprehensive maritime power is related to modern infrastructure in ships and ports their interland connectivity the ability of them to use blue economy portals and also the navy coast guard and their own maritime initiatives whether it's offshore exploration as island development whether it's tourism whether it is infrastructure all this come together in creating the 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 core objectives of comprehensive maritime power which will complement comprehensive national power so china realized this and they started investing heavily in science and technology in ship building they overtook south korea and japan in terms of ship building that gave them an edge in establishing their presence in the maritime trade and commerce hubs around the world likewise they also invested heavily in science and technology and r&d for creating their own platforms today they can make their own nuclear submarines their own ships and they built aircraft carriers just are like of course the one which we commissioned in september we also joined that uh, uh, exclusive club who are in a position to uh, build their own carriers so now they have carriers no now, now itself i can mention to you that their carriers are yet to come out into the indian ocean region will they come of course they will come the carriers are not there for only protecting their coast they have an ambition to be dominant power and they would like to have the standard percepts of the navy which is presence and forward posturing the forward presence and posturing they can play it both ways that means you are available on call in an area of interest we are in a position to control the phase of operations in that area and bring situation and control in the navy you use two standard terms sea control sea denial sea denial is an option that is used by smaller countries where they would try to protect their harbors by mines by midget submarines and other passive measures whereas sea control would demand that you are using your naval assets for establishing an area of supremacy just like air power where in an area of interest you control everything that happens in 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 an underwater on the sea and in the air in the area of interest so this has been clearly understood by china and they of course have added the cyber dimension and this cyber dimension is now inescapable whether you are over land whether you are air or at sea so they invested heavily they of course reverse engineered a lot of technology from russian ships which they bought russian aircraft and of course the technology was available particularly after the breakup of soviet union you know they were able to pay these scientists heavily all of them were brought to china and they were employed in shipyards they were employed in r&d organizations and 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 the, the decades of strength that soviet union had developed in terms of their r&d in military technology was something that was easily accessed by this proactive approach of engaging soviet uh, are uh, now russian uh, scientists so today their total number has surpassed that of american navy are mere numbers uh, uh, illustrative of their strength definitely no because please remember geography has been the biggest hindrance to china's growth unlike america which is a big island you know where they can push out anywhere china because of the disputes in south china sea where it has disputes with vietnam with brunei with philippines with every neighbor there they have some kind of a dispute or dada and therefore within south china sea what they did was to build artificial islands over reefs and rocks which is 
does not give them the exclusive economic zone but they wanted to convert this into something which will give them a larger sea area for protecting their future interests for food security for energy security and all such so <clears throat> what did they do they of course occupied all these reefs and rocks in uh, disputed exclusive economic zones they built artificial islands they had military garrisons they had the ability to redeploy aircraft from here which extended the range so you know this this is the way that they been able to overcome some of the limitations of their uh, geographical location so let's be come back to the pla navy indian ocean region so why does the pla navy wants to be in the indian ocean region so here is where we must understand the criticality of the supplies that i mentioned earlier now the sea lines of communication which serve the energy routes of the world and if these are critical it understands that if 90% of uh, energy imports are required both by india and china that to come from the sea they are looking at alternate means i'm not, i'm not talking about that but the fact is that even today or even for 10 to 15 years from now there will be no alternate route that can provide the kind of volume of traffic into china or india from the middle east and other energy sources including perhaps from russia so what is the criticality the criticality is as flashed on the slide is about the vulnerability of the sea lines of communication when it passes through the singapore straits you know what we call as the the strait dilemma the strait dilemma is simple that this is a small passage of course open to international traffic you can't shut it down but the fact is that in the event of a war there the complete energy security can be <coughs> hindered by active operations of players today it could be india it could be the quad partners it could be the aquas partners so any of these people can disrupt the continued supply you know unhindered supply of energy goods to uh, china it is not just energy goods it can also be the merchandise project which is what sustaining the chinese economy so they concern of this malacca dilemma and this malacca dilemma has what is you know uh, prompted them to look at alternate sources alternate routing godar is one example from godar you know all the way up to jinjiang you have this oil pipe routes which are there which will ensure that they don't have to go through malacca but at least sustain a supply chain through uh, from godar over the land right into this remember again that pakistan had only one big port karachi which was very susceptible to attacks from india and therefore now the presence of china in godar or pla navy in china will complicate matters for indian navy in terms of establishing sea control particularly in the north arabian sea over there we cannot overlook also the participation of turkey especially now today as turkey i <laughs> but the point is that turkey pakistan china russia have all conducted exercises in north arabian sea and that complicates matters for the indian navy so the pl navy's interest became more consolidated particularly after the piracy attacks which peaked in 2005 2005 to 2009 was something of a nightmare for the mercantile community whose ships were hijacked and heavy ransoms were paid to <coughs> extricate from 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 the from the jaws of the pirates china used this as a golden opportunity they deployed their pla navy units even today when you look at the count <coughs> excuse me something like 365 missions have taken place in the last 10 years so two combat units have always been placed along the somali coast they are patrolling today why are they patrolling today even when piracy is come under control please remember that a lot of what navy does or the success of naval operations depend on complete thorough knowledge of the local environment i am talking about the wind of the tides of the bathymetric data of the surroundings of the pattern of traffic in that area and the partners if any and those who are opposed to these countries if any all this has to be factored 
and china lost no time in the last 13 years more than nearly 15 years <coughs> to ensure that they carried out a complete study of the seas in which they are likely to operate to protect their interests whether it is the interest in terms of energy security or whether it is in the interest of countries that they are cultivating who are these countries that they are cultivating here you know i think there's another slide which shows you where all they have their ports and all that I'll request general shankar to show that later but point is that if you are engaged in security operations in the indian ocean region you need bases you know i have always referred to this as a tyranny of distance so if you are cut off from south china sea and come all the way to indian ocean region whether it is abantota or godar or maldives or any of the african coast there is a phenomenal amount of distance that you have to cover just i think two days ago this analysis was carried out as to how many supply ships does it have how many ships does it have for protecting the uh, the ships which are deployed like pla navy units you can't have a ship per se be or you are on your own you require support from auxiliaries fleet auxiliaries tankers support ships maintenance ships in including perhaps some of the floating docks that may be necessary in friendly countries all these are required to sustain the momentum of any naval operation in an area of interest which is where we found that china has made forays into indian ocean region which is why the pla navy is here they are in hambantota hambantota we say no no it's not a military port yes it's a commercial port but in war time if you have total control of this port for 99 years which of course came their way because of uh, debt trap diplomacy so they have this under their control this was put to test indirectly during peace time by china deploying the ywf a research vessel you know which was here to monitor the the satellite launches from chandipur for carrying out telemetry operations and you know we all know about this so i am not going to dwell on this the point is that it became a point of contest between india and uh, china and at least on paper it appears that china had its way they were able to arm twist sri lanka in accepting ywf oh well, let me also make it very clear that a such a passage or visit to ships in india china pakistan wherever is something that is not prohibited by an class but it's only that we are trying to look at the sensitivities associated with the passage of ww5 which was on a spying mission and which was gathering data you know and therefore it was something that we considered as inimical to our interests but it's a different matter that sri lanka allowed it so this is what will be the pattern please remember in 1971 when pakistan wanted to deploy its pn units sri lanka provided the logistic support they provided fueling they provided rations they provided uh, turnaround facilities recreational facilities to pakistani naval units which are going there so you know we should be quite clear that when you have bases whether it's in ambantota or godar or maldives you know it's something that will be used in war time in our own case the other parallel example that i can quote is about lebova where we have agreements with the usa that means in times of conflict or even otherwise in peace time to extend the range of operations we can always use bases mutually i can use american base american use our base so similar facilities here they are in a better position when it comes to use of godar or hambat tota and then they realize that there could be some kind of sensitivities they went ahead and bought jiboti the the military base which is there it is not that it's only china which is there there are french there are americans there are any any number of navies and if if india wants to buy some portion of land there i'm sure it's available so it's a commercial deal but the point is that there is a military base so having realized that it's very difficult to sustain operations of deployed units in the indian ocean region they ensured that there would be no impediments in terms of supporting a naval operation in in arabian sea or in bay of bengal so in the arabian sea it's godar 
at Djibouti. It is the African countries who have opened their... Uh, but also, increasingly, we can realize that Saudi Arabia and China, you know, who have enjoy, who are enjoying good relations, could have some kind of uh, strategic understanding to uh, make available their ports for turnaround operations, for providing fuel, and that kind which America has been doing in Bahrain for uh, decades. So, in Bay of Bengal, you know, they have a serious interest. We have increasingly heard about their deployment in Cocoa Islands. Cocoa Islands, when we looked at it earlier, was something which had a small airstrip on China with every time when we issued the notice to mariners, a notice to say that we are launching satellites or launching, carrying out a missile test, would invariably send their use dropping equipment and use this for uh, uh, as a listening post. Now, with the renewed activities which is being reported, it's quite possible that this will be showed up and we'll have greater presence of uh, PLA units. Uh, you know, they can always mask it. They don't have to necessarily use a frigate or a carrier there, but they can use other uh, scientific uh, uh, R&D ships which, which, which can complement their objective of keeping the entire area and surveillance in the Bay of Bengal. So, both in the Bay of Bengal, you know, because of Bangladesh, because of Myanmar, because of the kind of units that they supply to these countries, their presence is always there. And this presence of their uh, uh, people, their units, is what will ensure that their interests of, uh, you know, being ahead of the game is served over here. Now, let me look at uh, some of the other issues which are at, at both at a strategic level and a tactical level. As I already said, the tactical level uh, forbids China to deploy too many units here because they have to protect their turf in South China Sea. You know, if you have disputes with your neighbors, you can't let it go and say, I will deploy all my units in the Indian Ocean region. Mm -hmm. you know, therefore, something like my estimate is, you know, while numerically they are superior to America, in terms of quality, there are debates on how much better off they are there. But the point is that when you have this kind of disputes with all these neighbors, if you have to protect this illegally occupied territory, you have to commit something like 30 to 40 percent of your naval assets. That is the reality. So of the balance 60 percent, which has to be deployed in the Indian Ocean region, they have this limitation, like I said, of the logistic chain. The logistic chain is long and elongated. And that, that can be intercepted whether it's in the Malacca states or whether it's as they're rounding Sri Lanka or whether they're approaching Gwadar or whatever, because the overall maritime domain awareness options that India has, has been refined. More so after the Bombay attacks, the Mumbai terror attack, you know, ensured that we invested phenomenal amount of money on coastal radar stations, on the maritime domain awareness program. Today, it's a vibrant program which has foreign participation. The French, American, UK, <laughs> and others. And we have many uh, well-curated programs such as uh, the white ship programs, the gray ship programs, which, which has enabled us to have transparency, at least of the big ships which are transiting on a daily basis. So therefore, any Chinese ship which is venturing in India, we have our submarines. You know, I think about a few years ago, I had written an article on camping expeditions of Indian Navy, which told you which are the eight points where we are monitoring on a daily basis, 365 days. On 365 day basis, 24 7 basis, we are monitoring this through ships, through drones. You know, some of these uh, uh, UAVs are so sophisticated, they can remain up to two days up in the sky and they are going all the way to, let's say, Djibouti, for example. I'm only talking in terms of reach. So they can go up to Red Sea, they can go to Djibouti, and they are providing you real time information. So it's not that Chinese units which enter IOR will be off our scan. And our response mechanisms are fine-tuned. And you have the biggest advantage of geography. You know, you can launch missions on both coasts. You can launch them from our offshore islands. The biggest asset is the Andaman Nicobar. You know, I think we've had sessions here where we looked at Andaman Nicobar and its utility to India. That is our forward post. It was our fortress commander 
till we established the tri service command in 2003 that you know this was providing us the options it is a different matter that we did not invest as much because of the psychological fear if i may say so at that time of the chinese thankfully we have overcome this now and we are not hesitating anymore and we openly say it's china which is our number one addressing it was our old raksha mantri george fernandes who first said that china is our number one enemy i think you should not fight shy of acknowledging the kind of uh, <clears throat> threat that china poses economically politically tactically strategically only when you have taken cognizance of all this would you be in a position to uh, sort of counter the the kind of initiatives that uh, china is doing through economic means you know the why why is he again interested in the indian ocean region it is also for improving the economic potential of china remember something like 3.4 trillion dollars of yours is uh, lying uh, unutilized and this is the uh, a master stroke by g when he said i will use it for investment in destination countries developing countries which require phenomenal foreign direct investment and they coined the famous one belt one road on the maritime dimension of course it is the maritime silk road so silk road is nothing new for centuries the silk road was in existence both over land and sea routes but it was the as i always say old wine in new bottle with the coinage of maritime silk road where he found use for the surplus money that was in his city started investing on his terms you know most of these appeared bilateral but the point is it was all this was skewed in the favor of china their investment came with <coughs> a bundle of uh, uh, you know res- restrictions for the country in which it was invested in terms of how many people would be deployed from china what kind of engineering advice would be given and something like 80 to 85% as per calculation is something that went back to china through this processes of uh, reverse flow uh, which was uh, included in the in the contracts so you know so it was been put to good use it's a master stroke like i said and through this you know we always said it is the flag that follows trade it happened in the case of uh, the british it's happening now in the case of china and therefore they would like to invest and subjugate these countries through the economic uh, stranglehold which is obviously the checkbook diplomacy and you have seen the examples in uh, sri lanka in african countries in malaysia where it was renewed and in any other countries where they have realized that you know majority of the benefits flow back to china is not with us you know this this is also proven by the fact that one of the first european countries which signed up for the bri italy is reviewing the whole thing and by 24 they are going to walk out of the bri walk out yes sir. so this is the reality and therefore we should be conscious of the fact that china will use everything in its means you know whether it is influence operations of which we spoken about earlier whether it is economic investment whether it is buying the political uh, leaders whether it is <clears throat> to uh you know manipulation of international organizations it is using everything in the book and outside the book you know to see that it gains prominence so the limitations are already is, uh, spoken about earlier so i will uh, perhaps stop here so that there is enough time for uh, people to ask specific questions on which i can deliberate upon but by and large uh, if you have to flag the important points here the importance of geography therefore the advantages or the limitations that geography confers on a any particular nation the economic clout which is of importance and the developments in the present day whether it is the russia ukraine which is impinged on energy security food security etc so the china which is now uh, looking at many other areas to ensure that it displaces america i think general shankar has written about it has uh, spoken about it on empty number of occasions on the limitations that china will face in uh, overcoming the, the this kind of uh, systemic constraint that it has so uh, that that's where i will stop uh, and uh, we will take on questions uh, with uh, 
uh, as may be moderated by general shankar thank you yes uh, sir thanks a lot aapne bahut vistar mein bata diya ki china ka kya irada hai uska kya ambition hai indian ocean region mein aapne indian ocean region ke bare mein bataya aur china ka limitations ke bare mein bataya main sanshipt roop mein uh, jo मैं हिंदी में बताऊंगा आप थोड़ा दो मिनट में मैं दोहरा जाऊँ आपने क्या बोला है आपने सबसे पहले ये बोला है कि इंडियन ओशन रीजन जो है ये एक बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट रीजन है जहाँ ट्रेड काफ़ी होता है उसके साथ साथ ऑयल का फ्लो होता है राइट और जो चाइना जो रिसोर्स डिफिशेंट नेशन है उसका मैक्सिमम एनर्जी इसी के थ्रू इसी के जरिए मिडल ईस्ट से लेकर थ्रू मलाका स्ट्रेट वहां चला जाता है इसको सुरक्षित रखने के लिए वो अपना नेवी को इस इलाके में डिप्लॉय करेगा और यकीन करेगा कि उसका अपना एनर्जी सिक्योरिटी और फूड सिक्योरिटी क्योंकि चाइना एक फूड सिक्योरिटी नेशन है उसको भी सुरक्षित रखने के लिए पूरा कोशिश करेगा नंबर एक नंबर दो उसके जो बेल्ट एंड रोड इनिशियटिव के जरिए वो अपना फ्लैग सॉरी अपना ट्रेड को लेके गया है अफ्रीका में मिडल ईस्ट में पाकिस्तान में बांग्लादेश में म्यांमार में और पूरा साउथ ईस्ट एशिया में साउथ एशिया में वेस्ट एशिया में और अफ्रीका में और ये बीआरआई में के जरिए इस इन इन्होंने चाइना ने काफी देशों को सब्जिगेट किया पॉलिटिकली और चेकबुक डिप्लोमेसी और डेट ट्रैप के जरिए इनको कब्जा कर लिया पोलिटिकली और इसके जरिए क्योंकि इनके इंटरेस्ट है वहां ये अपना नेवी इस इलाके में डिप्लॉय करेगा जैसे आपने हमने देखा एक मैप में दोबारा एक बार दिखा देता हूं वो मैप बीआरआई का मैप आप अगर हम देखेंगे तो ये जो बीआरआई जो है पूरा इंडियन ओशन के इर्द गिर्द ही है और जब तक इंडियन ओशन को कंट्रोल नहीं कर पाएगा चाइना ये उसका पूरा इंटरेस्ट इस इलाके में है उसको भी कंट्रोल नहीं कर पाएगा तो ये दो मुख्य विषय है जिसलिए इसका इंटरेस्ट है एम्बिशन है इंडियन ओशन में हावी रखने के लिए तीसरा इंपॉर्टेंट चीज है कि वो इंडिया के ऊपर हावी रखना है इंडिया को चेक करना है और इंडिया को कंट्रोल करना है और इंडिया को कंटेन करना है इसीलिए हम सुनते रहते हैं ये स्ट्रिंग ऑफ पर्ल्स थेरी वगैरह 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 वो इसीलिए है क्योंकि उसको ये भी पता है कि इस युग में अगर इसका एशिया में कोई कॉम्पिटिटर है वो है इंडिया और जैसे हमें पता है चाइना में बहुत प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है डेमोग्राफी वगैरह का प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है आबादी का प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है और इंडिया एक उभरता हुआ पावर है वो हमें नीचे दबाना चाहता है हमें नीचे दबाने के लिए उसने इंडियन ओशन रीजन में और अपने नेबर्स के ऊपर इनक्रोच किया है बांग्लादेश म्यांमार हम्बन जैसे श्रीलंका पाकिस्तान वगैरह के साथ मालदीव वगैरह के साथ और हमें स्ट्रिंग ऑफ पर्ल्स में बांधना चाहता है और हमें कंटेन करना चाहते हैं तो ये तीन मुख्य एम्बिशन है तीन मुख्य इंटरेस्ट है जिसके जरिए ये इंडियन ओशन का कंट्रोल करना चाहता है और उसका चौथा इंटरेस्ट है वो सबसे बड़ा पावर बनना चाहता है विश्व में अगर सबसे बड़ा पावर बनना चाहता है तो इस इलाके से अमेरिका को बाहर धकेलना पड़ेगा और आ, इंडिया को बंद करना पड़ेगा और इसके लिए भी वो इंडियन ओशन में डिप्लॉय करना चाहता है ये है इसके एम्बिशन अभी इसका लिमिटेशन इसके पास सबसे बड़ा नेवी है पर जैसे आपने बताया इसके प्रॉब्लम चाइना के प्रॉब्लम अपना तट से ही शुरू हो जाता है क्योंकि साउथ कोरिया जापान मलेशिया इंडोनेशिया ब्रूने फिलीपींस ताइवान और वियतनाम के साथ इसके किटपिट है जब तक उनके ऊपर हावी नहीं हो सकता वो बाहर नहीं निकल सकता और हावी होने के लिए 30 से 40 प्रतिशत उसका नेवी को वहां डिप्लॉय करना पड़ेगा बाद बाकी 70 60 परसेंट के साथ वो इंडियन ओशन में सिर्फ इसका इंटरेस्ट इंडियन ओशन में ही नहीं है उसके पैसिफिक में भी ओशन है क्योंकि वो पैसिफिक आइलैंड ग्रुप में भी कुछ काम कर रहा है और वो आर्टिक रीजन जो कुल रहा है उसमें भी इसको काम है तो बाकी साठ नेवी के साथ वो बाहर निकलना है पर इसका दिक्कत आज के दिन ये है कि इसका जो बाकी 60 परसेंट का नेवी लॉन्ग रेंज नेवी नहीं है शॉर्ट रेंज नेवी है और शॉर्ट लॉन्ग रेंज नेवी अभी बन रहा है इसका एयरक्राफ्ट कैरियर पूरे ऑपरेशनल नहीं है एक एयरक्राफ्ट कैरियर ऑपरेशनल है बाकी दो के ऑपरेशनल नहीं है फुल्ली 
और ये तीनों एयरक्राफ्ट कैरियर जो अभी चलते हैं सी में वो अपना तट को छोड़ के बाहर नहीं गए हैं आज तक राइट इसको दिक्कत है और इंडियन ओशन में आने के लिए टाइम लगेगा क्योंकि इसके पास कोई बेस नहीं है हालांकि बहुत पोर्ट्स में इन्वेस्टमेंट हुआ पोर्ट में रिफ्यूलिंग का प्रॉब वगैरह वगैरह हो सकता है पर बेस नहीं है जहां एमिनेशन को यू नो ही कैन स्टॉक एमिनेशन एंड रीफिट हिस्स शिप्स ही कैन डू एमआरओ ही कैन डू रीफिटमेंट ऑफ शिप्स ही कैन डू एमिनेशन मैनेजमेंट एंड ऑल जब तक ये नहीं है तो इसको प्रॉब्लम है तादाद में आके इंडियन ओशन में डिप्लॉय करने के लिए पर इसको ओवर ओवरकम कर रहा है क्योंकि ग्वादर जो सीपीसी के तहत बन रहा है पाकिस्तान में वो एक ने, मेजर नेवल बेस आगे जाके बनेगा इसमें कोई डाउट नहीं होना चाहिए इसके अलावा इसका कोशिश ये है कि हम्बन टोटा में भी कुछ करे और म्यांमार में जो क्या फोर्ट है उसको भी पाने की कोशिश कर रहा है जहाँ एक बेस स्थापित करे और ये चाहता है कि बे ऑफ बंगाल सदर्न इंडोनेशियन और अरेबियन सी में इसका हावी हो राइट right, ये इसका ये है पर इसका आज के दिन इसके पास ना बेसिस है ना शिप्स हैं इस इलाके में आके करने के लिए पर इसके पास क्या है इसके पास रिकॉनसेंस वेसल्स हैं इसके पास इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सर्वेलेंस वेसल्स हैं जिसके जरिए इस इस इलाके को मैप कर रहा है और कल के दिन आने के लिए ये पूरा तैयारी कर रहा है राइट right? और इसीलिए ये यू एन मैंग वगैरह वगैरह यहाँ आता है कोको आईलैंड के बारे में हम सुनते रहते हैं वगैरह वगैरह पर आज के दिन नहीं है पर कल के दिन होगा और इसके तहत आपने बता दिया कि हम क्या कर रहे हैं हमारा नेवी है बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग नेवी है एक्सपीरियंस नेवी है और एक्सपीरियंस इंडियन ओशन में है हमने मेरिटाइन डोमेन अवेयरनेस के लिए बहुत कदम उठाए हैं हम अपना आइलैंड टेरिटरीज जैसे लक्षद्वीप है या इंडमा अंडमान निकोबार है उसमें है और हमारा शोर बेस्ड कैपेसिटीज खास करके एयर कैपेसिटीज जो सदर्न इंडिया में है हम उसको मजबूत कर रहे हैं राइट right? तो ये है मोटा मोटा तौर पर पीएलए नेवी का इस इलाके में आना जाने का पूरा एम्बिशन और लिमिटेशन पर एक चीज तय है कि वो कल के दिन यहाँ आने का पूरा कोशिश करेगा और इसका लॉन्ग टर्म प्लान ये है कि वो इंडियन ओशन में आना चाहता है राइट right? ये एक अपने पूरा एक विस्तार में आपने पूरा बताया और मैं बहुत आभारी हूँ कुछ क्वेश्चन है हम हमारे पास पंद्रह बीस मिनट हैं वील गो थ्रू ईच वन ऑफ देम एंड आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू ओनली बी लिटिल क्रिस्प द क्वेश्चन सो दैट वी कैन हैव मोर क्वेश्चन आंसर राइट ओके सर दीपेन कुमार से गुड इवनिंग सर कैन यू पुट सम लाइट ऑन चाइनीज प्रोग्रेस ऑन ड्रोन शिप्स वेन ई सेज ड्रोन शिप्स आई एक्सपेक्ट दैट आई मीन आई सस्पेक्ट ही से He is talking of unmanned ships, not drones, really unmanned uh, vessels. So, if you could give us some idea about it, sir. I know the 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 entire modern warfare is now talking about unmanned uh, uh, vehicles, drones, underwater vehicles. So, in everywhere, it is question of bringing down manned uh, missions. I know, therefore, you know there is no risk to men, and you know it's more automated. It's susceptible to control from shore. You know, with modern communication and all that, and you know the cost will also be much less. And you are looking at obviously, you know, which is why you know when you look at the success of uh, sinking of Moscow, you know, Ukraine war, it will tell you what all went into that. You know, I am not going into the details, but point is that phenomenal amount of uh, drone activity in all the three media is what will sustain the tempo of war tomorrow. So China has invested heavily. In fact, they are one among the first who carried out their uh, Underwater unmanned vehicle uh, test, which took them beyond six kilometers underwater, you know, the, the close to South China Sea, and you know, therefore, tomorrow's underwater, uh, what we call UUVs, unmanned underwater vessels, they are in a position to be weaponized. You know, that means they are in areas waiting in particular position because endurance will not be a limit anymore. Some of them could be uh, AIP enabled, or it could be just battery propelled. Because you don't have to look for oxygen anymore, except for propulsion and maintaining your area. So they'll be weaponized. So the future is very bright for this, and therefore the uh, it's not that uh, manned ships will be out of the scene today. But point is, yeah. there'll be a they'll sequencing. Be, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, there'll be sequencing, and there'll be uh, you know 
कंबाइंड ऑपरेशन ऑफ मैन एंड अनबाइंड शिप एब्सोल्यूटली राइट सो बात यह है कि ये चाइना का चाइना ने काफी तरक्की किया है इन दिस अनमैंड शिप्स दे इवन ट्राइंग सरफेस शिप्स एंड दे आर ट्राइंग इवन अंडर वाटर व्हीकल्स बट एक ही चीज है जो मैं बता देना चाहता हूं जो कमांडर साहब ने बताया टायरनी ऑफ डिस्टेंस क्या ये चाइना से लेकर इंडियन ओशन तक लेके आ सकते हैं वो एक क्वेश्चन मार्क है यही छोड़ देते हैं राइट right. Uh, एक सवाल है सर कैन पीएलए नेवी सबमरीन चोक और वेस्टर्न पोर्ट्स लाइक मुंद्रा मुंबई एक्सेट्रा ऑफ कोर्स यू नो दैट देयर इज द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द सबमरीन रिमेंबर इवन इन 1971 एन ओल्ड पीएनएस गाजी वाज एबल टू ट्रांजिट ऑल द वे फ्रॉम कराची ऑल द वे अप टू शाकापट्टनम वेयर इट इट मेड्स इट ग्रेव यू नो सो द पॉइंट इज दैट सबमरीन्स ऑफ दोस डेज हैड दिस काइंड ऑफ अ कैपेबिलिटी So they had the restriction of you know every three four days they had to surface. Today that restriction is not there anymore. But China has enough number of nuclear submarines, you know, both in the SSN role and the SSBN role. The difference being that one can carry missiles, the other one need not carry uh, ICBMs. So uh, deployment of those submarines to complicate the underwater picture of Bombay, of uh, Karwar. or any other important place is something that will be a reality and this has be factored but like uh, general shankar brought out uh, we have a very formidable asset in the name of pdi uh, which is the uh, the boeing base it is a boeing uh, frame but completely modified for naval applications and that's been used by the army by the air force and by the navy you know so therefore during the lac even today they fly missions along that because of the excellent electronic equipment that they have so we'll continue and they have excellent range of solo boys and uh, we also looking at uh, having uh, some some kind of a system such as the sources which was the cold war era underwater systems that were uh, uh, you know network of solo boys for monitoring uh, submarines nuclear submarines etc so this will be a cat and mouse game that will go on you know so in, therefore uh, we have Uh, increased our efforts during peace time to track these submarines because modern day submarines are silent they can be deployed at extended distances so any opportunity that you get to record their electronic signature propeller signature their pump signature in you know, order digital signature and store it your application during war will be that much more easier when you have the complete library a digital library of of all the signatures that are likely to be there in all the three domains yeah thank you sir uh, that was very well brought out main abhi isse pehle ki main aur question lo main ek chota break lena chahta hu and i want to tell about jaldify on you know indian ocean ambitions of china so this is a new thing which has started ki we have a view of china what does china think of this entire game right I'll just give ex- excerpts of this from their media, ताकि हमें पता चले उनका क्या इरादा है इस इलाके में आने का वगैरह वगैरह, right? सबसे पहले देखिए इनका ये सोच है कि China and Indian Navy is why for influence in Indian Ocean amid border tensions. वो देखिए हमारा जो border tension है उसके साथ साथ वो अपना Indian Ocean uh, region में भी जो भी है वो गतिविधियाँ they are seeing it as a compact. ये नहीं ये मेरी टाइम ऑपरेशन और उनका लैंड ऑपरेशन अलग अलग है वो सिंक्रोनाइज ऑपरेशन होंगे राइट और उनको बड़ी क्लियर है कि ये देखिए ये इसीलिए मैंने वो पंजा दिखाया इंडिया और चाइना का इनका दृश्य ये है इनका सोच ये है कि दैट हमारे साथ टक्कर होगा तो हमें बड़ा क्लियर होना चाहिए कि टक्कर होने वाला है राइट नेक्स्ट चीज जो बात हमसे ये हो गया चाइना इज आल्सो ट्राइंग टू कंट्रोल इंडियन ओशन रीजन थ्रू अ डिफरेंट मैनर ये क्या है कि पिछले महीने इन्होंने इन्होंने पिछले महीने दो तीन महीने पहले इन्होंने एक कॉन्फ्रेंस बुलाया इंडियन ओशन रीजन कंट्रीज में का और उन्होंने इंडियन ओशन डेवलपमेंट के बारे में इन्होंने कॉन्फ्रेंस किया जिसमें इन्होंने इंडिया को बाहर कर दिया इंडिया को बुलाया ही नहीं उसके बाद ऑस्ट्रेलिया को जब पता चला ये हो रहा है उन्होंने भी विड्रॉ कर लिया तो ये बात मालदीव्स भी थोड़ा खिसक गया साइड में पर इनका कोशिश यह है कि इंडियो इंडिया को साइड ट्रैक करें तीसरा जैसे बताया इनका 
चाल चलन है ऑलरेडी ये चाइना का फ्रिगेट ये 2019 की बात है एक फ्रिगेट तब से फ्रिग, इनका चाइना का जो वॉरशिप्स हैं वो आ रहे हैं राइट तो ये चाल चलन अभी इनका नहीं है ये पहले से चला आ रहा है और ये प्रॉब्लम जारी होगा अभी क्या है कि जब हम्बन टोटा उनके हाथ में है हमारे ऊपर कतरा और ही बढ़ गया है ओके okay. उसके अलावा आपको पता है यूएन बैंक फाइव जो स्पाइसशिप आया था वो आया किस लिए कि वो हमारे जो मिसाइल टेस्टिंग और हमारा जो सैटेलाइट लॉन्च व्हीकल सबके ऊपर निगरानी रखने के लिए और इसके साथ साथ वो कोको आइलैंड भी जुड़ा हुआ है कोको आइलैंड का अल्टीमेट जरूरत क्या है जो कमांडर साहब ने बताया वो इसीलिए है कि जो हमारा बालासोर जो उड़ीसा कोस्ट में है वो वहां से पांच छह सौ किलोमीटर है उससे वो हमारा जो पूरा सेट मिसाइल टेस्टिंग और सैटेलाइट लॉन्च का मॉनिटर करना और जो भी गतिविधियां अंडमान निकोबार में हो रहे हैं उसके ऊपर निगरानी रखना तो दे आर ट्राइंग टू कंट्रोल द सैटेलाइट सर्वेलेंस एंड मैरी टाइम डोमेन अवेयरनेस इन दिस रीजन ऑल्सो ऑन दे इन देर ओन वे वो इंपॉर्टेंट चीज है एक और बात यह है कि हम अक्सर भूल जाते हैं कि इंडियन ओशन रीजन में पाकिस्तान भी है और पाकिस्तान में ग्वादर नामक पोर्ट वहां बेस बनेगा और चाइना अभी पाकिस्तान का नेवी तकरीबन चाइना का नेवी ही समझो क्योंकि वो चाइना का वॉरशिप भी है उसके पास ठीक एक जमाना था या आज के दिन में चाइना अकेला अपना नेवी को ऑपरेट करना पड़ रहा पर कल के दिन ये दृश्य नहीं होगा कल के दिन दृश्य ये होगा कि पाकिस्तान भी उसके साथ एक्टिवली काम करेगा इसमें हमें दो शक नहीं होना चाहिए किसी ने ये सवाल पूछा था कि क्या उनका सब मेरे नाके मुंद्रा और बॉम्बे पोर्ट को चौक कर सकते हैं जरूरी तो नहीं है क्योंकि वो पाकिस्तानी को भेजेंगे ठीक है पाकिस्तान के जरिए भी ये कल्यूसिविटी हो सकता है और लास्ट पॉइंट इसमें ये बताना चाहता हूँ चंद दिन पहले तीन चार महीने पहले एक सीनियर ऑफिसर पीएलए का उन्होंने रॉयल कॉलेज किसी यूके के कॉलेज में उन्होंने बोला कि एक ये टाइम वक्त की बात है जब चाइना का एयरक्राफ्ट कैरियर इंडियन ओशन रीजन में आएगा ये नहीं है कि ये बात विवाद का ये है कि कब आएगा पर आना तय है और जिस दिन वो आएगा हमें तैयार होना चाहिए कि हम क्या करेंगे ठीक राइट right. ये है इनका एम्बिशन और ये है और ये जल्दी फाइव अभी मैं वापस जाऊंगा जो सवाल है दो चार सवाल और लेंगे ओके okay. uh, ये लाइफ लॉन्ग लर्निंग वेलकम टू द शो दिस फर्स्ट टाइम यू आर कमिंग एंड आई एम ग्लैड यू आर कम फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम टू गनर शॉर्ट please do keep coming how can we unleash indian private sector and link with like minded asian and european powers for tot and joint development in unleashing massive naval infra manufacturing boom so your take yeah thank you first of all uh, thank you for bringing out those uh, five jaldi five uh, which thank is very you, important for people to know and uh, i'm so happy that you know you explained it so well in hindi my hindi is not as good so no let's okay sir that they all people have to people have to hmm jo jo kuch main kehna chahta hu main hindi mein nahi keh sakta hu jaise general saab keh rahe hain to iska wajah se mujhe hindi hindi angrezi hi baat karna padega nahi koi nahi sir aap baat kijiye hum usko yeah yeah so no there are only two points i wanted to add to what you already said about this uh, uh, submarine base uh, you know and now uh, in coco uh, please remember that all our tactical assets uh submarine assets are operating mostly from mizak i'm talking about the nuclear yes. uh vessels okay. you know which are required for our nuclear deterrents so when you are sitting in coco island or whether it is in bangladesh or myanmar you also would like to monitor and like just like we are recording the parameters they also would like to record the parameters of our submarines and therefore sitting close to this place you know whatever is moving out from any of these places including andaman nicobar they would like to deploy their uh, modern assets to record them that's one point other point is about yes you know in what time for some reason if hambantota will become uh, a base active base i just want to assure the audience that hambantota is within the striking range of army navy and air force 
कोस्ट गार्ड फ्रॉम इंडिया इसको कोई कोई चिंता नहीं है क्योंकि इधर से हम इधर ही बैठ के सबको मार सकते हैं पूरा अम्बर तोटा को डिस्ट्रॉय कर सकते हैं इन केस दे डिसाइड टू यूज अम्बर तोटा एज ए बेस इट इज वेली इट इज अ गुड टारगेट फॉर एस तो मैं बताना चाहता हूँ इसके अलावा ये ये वी कैन डू दैट इवन इन कोको आइलैंड कोको आइलैंड आइलैंड को भी ड्रिंक कर सकते हैं उसको सो व्हेन वी से दिस आर अनथिंकेबल कैरियर्स बट इवन अनथिंकेबल कैरियर्स कैन बी डिस्ट्रॉयड देखिए बात ये है कि आपको मैं दोबारा बताना चाहता हूं ये पॉइंट हम बता रहे हैं कि चाइना का एंबिशन क्या है हमने आज तक ये नहीं बताया हम क्या करेंगे वो एक अगले एपिसोड में बात करेंगे ऐसी बात नहीं है कि हमारे पास शक्ति नहीं है सर विल गेट बैक टू दिस क्वेश्चन या या दिस क्वेश्चन इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट वन बिकॉज़ यू नो इट कॉम्प्लीमेंट्स विद व्हाट इंडिया इज एमिंग टू डू यू नो यू ऑल हैव हर्ड इनफ अबाउट आत्मनिर्भरता यू नो इनफ अबाउट सागर इनफ अबाउट वेरियस अदर इनिशिएटिव्स व्हिच हैव बीन टेकन बाय दिस गवर्नमेंट इट ऑगर्स वेल फॉर द मैरिटाइम ग्रोथ द पार्टिसिपेशन ऑफ द प्राइवेट इंडस्ट्री समथिंग व्हिच इज टेकिंग प्लेस इन अ बिग वे आई विश मोर कुड हैपन बट द पॉइंट इज इट्स हैपनिंग even uh, now it's in public uh, domain the public knowledge that lnt was deeply involved in construction of our atv advanced technology vehicle which is the nuclear submarine arihant the strategic deterrence remember though of course the russians were also involved in this the point is that is as a drdo project lnt was deeply involved many private parties were involved in fabrication of hull in uh, titanium hulls in propulsion machinery nuclear reactors you know so there has been an active participation of the private and uh, public uh, partners this is this augurs well but more should happen you know because yeah, there a lot of yeah you know general shankar is in the best position because he is in iit he is looking at this on a daily basis and but the point is that i totally agree that this has to be a national mission or a mantra for us to get more private people on board there the right. climate is conducive you know whether it is birlas whether it is tatas they are willing to come on board provided yep. you know make it easy for them give them a single window you know make the procedure simple so that you know there is no bureaucracy so right. the digitization is what's going to help us in this uh, uh, you know aspirational scheme of atmanirbharata and uh, public private partnership obviously has to be complementary to atmanirbharata missions and so this is what will carry on further we can talk right. about it but वॉरफेर as we witnessed in the <coughs> ongoing russia ukraine warfare too many of these uh, new methods are being deployed whether it is uh, hypersonic missiles which was shot down apparently by the patriot missiles now or whether it is the use of cyber space but there is the influence operations which are going at the political level so it will be multi dimensional multi faceted approach to what we also have referred to in the past as hybrid warfare so this is where we have to up the ante and look at what kind of uh, approaches that we can have there are many solutions both in the conventional domain and in the unconventional domain as we discussed the drones and uh, unmanned vehicles will be there we used merchant ships exclusively during the 1971 war to augment our efforts then you know you also have the fishing fleet we always say it is the fishing fleet that is the eyes and ears of the fleet so all these are procedures that need to be refined you know it is work in progress let me tell not tell you that everything is working but it is work in progress but there are options that are available to offset the perceived advantage of china uh, in terms of technology in terms of their assets and in terms of their ability to carry out influence operations in our neighborhood so, so we are trying I, to I, I many measures i i I'll, yeah. i'll i'll just this thing i'll uh, highlight ek point ek point aajkal agar aap usa aur china ke beech mein agar aap shakti ka uh, tulna karte ho to ye bataya jata hai america has to come all the way near china to fight it right 
hence its power goes down similarly if china has to come all the way towards india and fight it its power will go down theek hai ab ye tyranny of distance jo inhone bataya wo bahut important shabd hai to agar hamare paas bahut hi asymmetric uh, uh, you know options hai which we can employ so don't worry it's a important question is and it's well answered but i just wanted to add this right the next question is uh, sir please so throw some light on air independent propulsion technology in submarine currently in use so i'll take it on i'll quickly put it out dekhiye uh, i cannot explain the entire air independent propulsion system today in this maybe some day i will do it mote mote taur par it is fuel cell technology pani lo fuel cell mein aur break up karo and you do it you can and this technology we have mastered it is just that nothing else it's what we talk of hydrogen technology is also something like this i leave it at that we'll not go into this further so china has coerced many nations to part with the infrastructure can you expect these nations to be docile cooperative with charge with change in government as china does not support them economically like us I think oh, it's probably... very simple you know we i think we've seen it we've seen the pattern it's very simple come in with lot of money give to them on terms you make profits it's win win for china but lose lose for the countries in which it's investing countries are becoming wise to this option yeah and aap dekhiye even now they are having problems in sri lanka itself similarly in other things so this is a game which will continue right okay yeah uh, yeah one thing which i want to like to say here is that uh, we should not forget that within the neighborhood it is india that has been able to provide help and support in times of need including this 4 billion dollar uh, aid that we gave you know multi mm-hmm. you gave them water you know yeah. who sub- went in uh, help of our neighboring countries when the cyclone struck so okay. the geographic location and the ability of india uh, is something that people look up to now they realize that china from this is sitting so far away uh, will not come to their aid either monetarily or physically so these are advantages to which the strengths to which we need uh, to work on yeah uh next question sir please comment on coco island issues yeah we have done quite a bit of thing on coco island so i will not touch this anymore uh this is a question sir can you highlight the chinese ssb and program many uh, american observers have questioned its stealth capacity but didn't the chinese submarine give american fleet a peekaboo recently uh would sir i think the public of- domain but what i would like to concentrate is on the fact that technology wise they are definitely not up to the american standards you know we should not compare uh, uh, americans with chinese technology whatever you say today china will take at least 10 to 15 20 years to catch up with the technological levels of uh, america or even uh, europe for that matter so as far as ssbns and ssans are concerned as a deterrent they have numbers they are sophisticated enough to deter uh, you know let's say an american advance uh, in the pacific so numbers wise they are adequate they have enough numbers of ssbs as basically missile capable vessels and they are complemented with the, to the df 21 27 the recent 27 and so these missiles and all that is basically their part of the grand strategy of the a to ad of which i think general shankar has spoken about yeah, yeah. अगर आपको याद है सब लोगों को पिछले बार जब एडमिरल श्रीकंडे आए थे हमने ए टू एडी के बारे में भी बात किया हमने चाइना का मल्टी डोमेन ऑपरेशन के बारे में भी बात किया और उस वक्त मैंने एक मैप भी दिखाया था पूरा उनका मार का इलाके का प्लीज सी दट वीडियो ये मैरिटाइम सीरीज है एक दो और हम बात करेंगे राइट and uh, so you have to see all this in a continuum agar agar alag alag dekhenge ye series to aapko problem hoga samajhne mein kya ho raha hai aur ye aise sawal aate rahenge butter chicken and naan ka aur main sawal nahi lunga do teen important sawal hain but uh, right uh, i will not take i'll uh, this thing mm, okay vishnuat sir you stated china's policy is tailored to meet its profits at the cost of recipient nations the people of these nations may not continue to support them with no tangible returns in the long run 
Vishnath, I think there's a problem in this. Uh, I did explain this when I spoke about the BRI as a whole in Africa and all where people are going against them, right? In many countries, people are not happy with them and they're not happy with the... In fact, even in a country like Pakistan, they are not happy. Pakistan itself, you see, the foreign ministers have met yesterday to discuss the killing of Chinese uh, right, uh, individuals in Pakistan. So they'll have this problem. They, I suppose they'll handle it. Okay. Uh, SD says, gonna short. Uh, when will India reach 10 trillion and when can we ever catch up with the Chinese economy? Look, we are not in a race. Let me explain this to you up front. Right? This is nothing to do with the naval thing, so that's why I'm answering it. We should progress the way we want. And China's economy, we don't have to catch up with them because they're going down. Very soon, you'll find maybe in 15, 20, 30 years, you'll, there'll be a crossover. So we should not be in a race. We should look to ourselves and we should look to make the poorest Indian happy. The weakest link for India is the poorest Indian. We look after him, the rest everything is looked after. Okay? Right. Uh, so, okay. So, I saw we have finished most of the questions. Some questions are not taken on because we, I think we've uh, uh, overshot a lot of time. And a lot of interesting questions, sir. You'll agree with me that, that very thoughtful questions which are thrown up. And uh, I think you, uh, you know, put in a lot of uh, uh, thoughts into their minds for them to come up with such questions. Iske saath mein aaj ka jo program hai band karna chata hu with a lot of thanks to Commodore Watson and a lot of thanks to all the audience who have uh, you know uh, come and been on this program. Thank you and Jai Hind. Jai Hind sir. Oh, thank you. It's been a great pleasure being here and uh, interacting with the audience. I know there are very interesting questions. I would have uh, liked to take them on individually, but due to time constraints, I think General Shankar has handled it very well, where he is pleased in to answer some of them to maintain continuity. So thank you very much. Please remember, as far as the last question is concerned, only one point I would like to add is that despite all the constraints, India is still the fastest economy. It is yeah. a chosen destination of the world today. That is what you have to cash on. So obviously, the, the bridging of the gap will be taken care of once you know that we're working to these advantages that we are offering to the world at large in terms of being as as an investing destination with, with a demography. You know, at the market economy that, that surpasses every other country in the world today. That's what we need to cash out. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir, and Jai Hind. See you.